Hi everyone, I am Colette King. I am the product lead in Service Hub who is working on building out all of the functionality for uh, customer success teams, which we are very, very excited to show you guys today. Um, so I know we just talked a bunch about onboarding um, and onboarding customers effectively is a absolutely critical moment in the customer journey. It's a make or break factor in the customer experience, but it's not the only factor. Um, customers can hit roadblocks or find unexpected value throughout the life cycle as a customer. And it's a customer success team's job to help the customer course correct or amplify the successes that they're already seeing. Um, however, with larger books of businesses, CSMs often struggle to know which accounts actually need their attention, um, which is why I am super excited to be demoing health scores and the CS workspace today. So health scores are a key tool that CSMs can use to track customers throughout their life cycle. And now CS teams can create those health scores on the company record in HubSpot, powered by all the data that they've already pulled into their CRM. Um, so to start, I just wanna introduce everyone to the customer success workspace, which is currently in public beta if you haven't seen it already. Um, the customer success workspace centralizes information in HubSpot to help CS teams manage their book of business. So anyone with a service hub pro or enterprise seat can get access to a personalized customer success workspace designed to help them manage their book of business by bringing their calendar, reports, tasks, CRM information, pipelines, you've got deal pipelines, you've got ticket pipelines, you can see support, you can see onboarding. Um, all of this is right in one place to hopefully make their jobs easier uh, in terms of managing uh, their book of business. This is a super exciting first step for HubSpot, but the health scores that I'm gonna demo are going to level up the CS workspace and really move the needle on running proactive customer success out of HubSpot. Um, so my quick caveat before I show the health scores is that they are currently in private beta. Um, Paul is gonna do me a favor and link the wait list in the chat. We are hoping to have the public beta where anyone with a service hub seat can opt in in late July. Uh, the wait list that we're dropping in the chat is, to, is gonna be used to select customers during our private beta, which is happening right now. Um, so just to set expectations, we might not be able to accept everyone during the private beta, but if you don't get access now, you will be able to join the public beta in late July. But if you want to get early access or get on the wait list for it, please uh, fill out the form that Paul is putting in the chat. So, all right. You still have to get everybody excited though. So this is great. Exactly. Um, so anyone with a customer success workspace permission, uh, this is the permission that allows you to add reports in the workspace or create shared views in the workspace are going to be able to create and edit health scores. These health scores leverage your existing data from HubSpot and they work with all of your favorite platform features such as lists, reporting, and automation. And so I've actually already set up a health score ahead of this demo, but I'm gonna walk you through each of the steps. So to start, the first thing that you're gonna do is use lists to identify which companies are actually customers who should be scored instead of maybe prospects or turned accounts. So you'll see here, I've got a number of lists set up, although I'm actually gonna leave it as setting scoring all companies today for the demo. Then within the health score builder, uh, customers can include basically any data that's already in HubSpot. So you can score pro company properties, you can score associated contact properties, deal properties, ticket properties, and coming very soon are associated custom object properties. You're also gonna be able to score events such as phone calls like air call or webinar registrations. Uh, and these can be HubSpot events. They can also be events created by integrations or custom events that you've created yourself. So if you are syncing product usage data into HubSpot through a custom integration or a custom event, that would be eligible to be included in the health score here. Um, and if you're wondering what the difference between a health score or, or sorry, a property and an event is, in general, we use properties to store information that can change like a job title or an email address, while we use an event to record things that don't change. So a good example is if you delete an email after you've opened it, you always opened that email and that email open will be stored as an event even though you later went on and deleted the email. So ahead of this call, I actually went ahead and modified the existing score template. There is a template that every customer is gonna see when they go to build a score for the first time. The template is designed to give you a sense of what's possible, but the score is 100% customizable and you can just delete any section you don't like with this little trash can icon up here. You're also gonna see that you can organize your groups uh, into either groups of properties or into groups of events. So each group has a max number of points that those properties or events can contribute to the overall score. Um, and this helps to control the weighting of each section and prevents one section from overrunning the entire score. You have 100 points to distribute across all of the groups as scores can only range from zero to 100. 
You can also both add and subtract points to make the score go up and down. Uh, and I actually recommend making sure that you have events that do both. So adding points and subtracting points, or your score is going to get stuck moving in only one direction. For any associated objects or events, so anything that is not the company record, you can manage which objects or events are being scored with association labels, and then you can also decide how you want those points from those objects to be included in the score. Last thing I'm gonna, ca gonna call out is a new default property that we've introduced on the company record called CSM Sentiment. Uh, right now there are three options in CSM Sentiment, and it basically just allows your CS team to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down about how they feel about an account on a given basis. So last thing I'm gonna do before turning on my score is adjust my ranges. Uh, I'm actually, I actually wanna create a higher threshold for what I'm gonna count as healthy, so I'm gonna set that to 80 but you can really decide whatever numbers work best for your company, uh, at what point a company, a company record would move from neutral to healthy or neutral to at risk. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click save, update. And now you're gonna see that I have two new company properties that have been created, and we can go take a look at those in a second. Um, all of the companies will be who are eligible are gonna be scored immediately as soon as you turn on the health score. And if I come back and make any changes to the score profile, those company scores are going to get updated as well. All right, so if we go back to the customer success workspace, go into the portfolio page, you're gonna see that I have two new company properties here, health status and health score. Uh, I've also created a custom view in this to see all of the health scores. And then I've also created a custom view for at-risk customers specifically. Since both of these views are shared views, they're actually gonna show up for anybody in my HubSpot account who is using the CS workspace. So everybody gets this view out of the box now that I've created it. You can also pin these properties on the left-hand company sidebar. So you can see those right here. So a CSM has easy access to them on an individual company record. So because these are normal company properties, you're able to use them in, you can use both properties in workflows, reporting, and automation. Uh, so now that I have my health score and I'm pretty happy with it, I'm gonna go ahead and create a few new workflows. The first workflow that I created reminds CSMs to update the CSM sentiment property every month with their assessment of the account by sending them an internal notification if the property hasn't been updated in the past 30 days. I've also created a workflow to alert managers if the property hasn't been updated in 60 days. This is a really good check-in opportunity to make sure that the CSM is engaging with the customers the way that we'd like them to, because if they are, they should have a sense of how this account is doing on at least maybe a monthly basis. The third workflow that I've created actually sends another notification to both the manager and a CSM if the health status changes from neutral to at risk. Right now, I have this alert uh, set up to trigger for any customers, but I can also limit it to only triggering for certain accounts above a revenue threshold if I'm worried about potential noise and I wanna keep my team super, super focused. Finally, I've created a list using health scores as well. This is a list of customers with a health score greater than 90 and marketing teams can use this to ask customers for case studies or, serve, or sales can ask them to use to serve as a reference customer. Uh, now I'm gonna go back to workflows and I'm going to create a workflow that's set up to email the marketing team anytime a new customer is added to the list. If I wanted to, I could also set it up to alert them when someone is removed from the list as well. So everything I just showed is available with the Health Score Builder that is currently in private beta, coming to public beta in late July. However, the engineering team is already working on additional functionality that we're hoping to make available in beta before the end of the summer. We know that as wonderful as all the automation and alerting I just showed are, that health scores actually need to mean something to CSMs for them to take action on it. We're working on visualizations, highlighting the health score, what are the inputs to the health score, and most importantly, showing how the health score has changed over time. So what I'm about to show you uh, are mockups of what we expect it to look like, and we typically do not show these on public webinars like this. So my only ask is that you remember that this is not yet available. Um, we are tentatively planning for a beta, like I said, this summer. Uh, and just please remember that these are not, these are mocks. What you see is tentative. It is not a guarantee or a promise of future functionality. Um, so here we go. The first thing that you're gonna notice is that there's gonna be a new summary card in the CS workspace showing the number of at-risk companies within a CSM's book of business. If you click over to the portfolio tab, you're gonna see that the health status and health score are highlighted, making it easier for CSMs to understand the account at a glance. 
we are also going to be creating a new CRM card that shows health score, health status, the direction of the most recent change, along with the degree of the most recent change, and the three most recent activities and reasons that the score changed. We are also introducing a chart that shows the score trend over time. And this is gonna go back much further than the existing 20 value property history limit that we have for most properties today. We will also show an event history table showing each change, the value of the change, the event that caused the change, the date that it happened, and the score as a result of the change. So I don't know about you, but I am very excited to get everyone uh, starting to use these new features and running customer success out of HubSpot a lot more effectively.